I think the first time I realized how much I loved music was in uh, junior high, I would turn on the radio and hear Stairway to Heaven or Layla or these interminable cl classic rock songs that spoke to nothing of my childhood experience and I was very kind of lost because everyone was telling me these, this was the, the best time to be a music fan and this is the best time of your life and I was very alienated and bored with everything that I heard. And then I saw the Talking Heads on Saturday Night Live and I excitedly went into school the next Monday to talk about it and everyone in school was talking about how weird they were and how bizarre and strange and odd and I thought, but, but I kind of like that. <laughs> and then, never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols and from there it was a, a rapid and joyful ride down <laughs> to where I am now. My family had a family friend, who, and when he would come to town, he'd always bring his guitar and just come to our house and play. And I remember being completely mesmerized. In 79, I was in San Francisco and went to see the Dead Kennedys at the People's Temple. And the People's Temple was this venue that had been Jim Jones's temple. And no other church wanted to move in there after they all killed themselves. So they started having punk rock shows there, and there were like eight bands on the bill, and it was crazy, and I sat on the balcony and watched the whole thing in amazement and loved the music. I first started hearing elements of roots music, soul, country, R&B, that kind of stuff, through punk bands like The Cramps or The Gun Club or Charlie Pickett or The Meat Puppets, and they were, they were taking country and, and bluegrass and, and blues and, and doing really weird things with it. And you know, as I got older you realize the connection that exists between punk and country. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. Few people consider them such disparate music forms, but they're very much populist and they're very simple and they're very about everyday life and it strips away all the, the pomposity and ridiculousness that was so prevalent in and still is so prevalent in popular culture. It's a, it's a direct connection to the audience. So I was doing a, DJing a country night in this little punk bar and Rob started hanging out there regularly making requests. And that's how we met and we ended up talking about local bands that all had some thread of primarily old school country running through their music and wouldn't it be cool to put out a compilation of those bands. So it was really a snapshot of the scene at the time. One release broke even, so what do we want to do now? Um, we can put out the next record. So the first couple releases were of bands that were on that first compilation. Waco Brothers, Moonshine Willie. And then we were getting letters from bands around the country and from fans around the country saying, hey, we have a scene like this in our town too. And so our second compilation we put out was bands from around the country who all had some thread of American roots forms in their indie or alternative or punk rock. 